What's the crack? This is Kieran. Welcome to Spearhead Media. So today we're going to get into a brutal slamming death metal logo. I don't mean anything like refined and symmetrical. I mean something filthy, like disgusting. The kind of thing you'd find on the floor of the toilets in your favourite dive bar. And you'd scoop it up, slap it against the wall and then be like, damn. That's my death metal logo. But before we get to that, I just want to say thank you so much for the 2K subs. I really didn't think we'd get this far when I started the channel a couple of months ago. And I didn't think people were really interested in learning about this style of design. So thanks for all the support. I'm going to keep making these videos. Big love. But before we get to the video, I want to do a little giveaway just to say thanks to everyone for all the support. So I'm going to give away this Savage Shadowcraft Spearhead t-shirt. There's only one left and it's in size XL and it's printed on high quality fair trade cotton. And if you want this t-shirt, all you have to do is comment the swords emoji down below to be in with a chance to win. I'm going to pick one winner at random in one week's time and then I'll post it out to you free of charge. Best of luck, now let's get into the video. Yo, yo, welcome back. This is Kieran with another Spearhead tutorial. So as I said in the intro, yeah, we're going to get into something absolutely filthy here. It's going to be a brutal kind of slamming death metal logo, completely unreadable, organic bundle of sticks style with loads of like splats and like damaged texture and just just completely horrible. The kind of thing that you're stuck at like obscene extreme fest and you're standing behind a guy with like dreadlocks down to his ankles and you see a couple of patches on, on his uh, battle jacket and you just can't read any of them. Don't get me wrong, I'm not the biggest slam or grind fan in the world, but I love the aesthetic that goes with the logos. I hate the misogyny and stuff in a lot of the, uh, the album artwork. I don't abide by that whatsoever. But the logos I'm really into. This kind of style is just so brutal and so illegible that it just screams like underground counterculture. And that's what we're going to go for here today. And as always, if you guys want to follow along at home, I've left a little folder with all the assets I've used in this tutorial. In this case, it's uh, the splats and the grit. So please consider giving me a little like and subscribe for more of that in future. So please keep watching and we're going to get stuck into it right now over in Photoshop. And if you would like to further support the channel and help me help you make sick artwork, then you can go over to spearheadirl.com where you can get everything from savage merch, unreal typefaces and class assets to use in all of your projects going forward. Right, so here we are in Photoshop and we've opened an A3 artboard. That's the usual, gonna flash the dimensions on screen there for you. And I'm just taking a pressure sensitive brush tool here and on a new layer, I'm roughly hashing out my letters for my logo. The word I've gone for is polymerization because I'm on a big Yu-Gi-Oh vibe. I mean, what's not to love about Yu-Gi-Oh? And uh, I just felt that that was a cool word to kind of work with. And it, it, let's face it, it's not far off like most slam bands names. So yeah, basically what I'm doing is I'm just starting off light on the edges of the letters and I'm going heavier as I go in just to kind of thicken up the internals and leave the tendrils of the letters like nice and kind of like slinky for lack of a better term. There's no real rhyme or reason here. I'm basically like fitting the letters in in kind of like as jagged a kind of way as I can go with as I move forward here. There's no real rules to this. I'm just really going by eye and just deciding what kind of like looks uh, nice to me. And as I go, I'm just kind of like getting a little bit more of a feeling for how I want it to look. So as you can see here, I've just like taken my P&O from the start and uh, copied and pasted them over, mirror flipped them horizontally and kind of just like mashed them into like an end shape at the end, just so we have like a small bit of symmetry. It's not quite symmetry, it's just more so balance, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's my eyes trained to like that and I just can't untrain myself. And yeah, I'm just kind of like messing around with a liquify pass here to kind of see if there's any other kind of shapes that look kind of cool. And yeah, after a few attempts with a uh, liquify, I actually decided that the, the shape that I'd created from the get-go was probably the one to go with it. Just like kind of looked right to me, you know? So all I really did was just play with my perspective a bit and then reduce the vertical height of the actual layer itself just to kind of keep the letters nice and kind of condensed if you get me. Then basically once I was kind of happy with my, my really rough kind of uh, idea here I just took my rough layer and kind of played around with refine edge a bit to kind of thicken it up so I have like a, a heavier kind of guide to go over once I, I start tracing in the details now. And then I dropped the opacity to 50% on that layer, made a new layer and took my lasso tool and as usual I just start drawing in the spikes. 
Every time I draw a spike, I'm aiming to keep each kind of part of the letter the same sort of thickness. Some people kind of uh, fall down here, like they have their hierarchy of the first and last letters like way too thick, whereas their internal letters are like so thin. It just doesn't look right, if you get me. So be mindful here when you're drawing in, like uh, even with really spiky letters like this, you're gonna want them to all be kind of a uniform kind of weight so that they look like they are part of the same logo, you know? That said though, it is all by eye. It's not an exact science as well, so if you feel like you want it to be really heavy on some letters and real skinny on others, by all means go for it, you know? But uh, just in terms of your fundamentals of design, it is kind of nice if all the letters are nicely weighted and uh, look like they belong to the same alphabet, as messed up as that alphabet might be. In this case, <laughs> very messed up. Basically, this is a bit of a tedious process. Uh, logos like this, the more detail that you're putting into your letters, the longer it's gonna take, like as you draw your detailed parts in. But you know, it's kind of nice. There is a few tips and tricks here as well. Like, you know, you can like chop bits off and like copy and paste them into different parts and use your refine edge to like thicken and thin out things. It's the joy of digital art, isn't it? You know, like control alt Z, we can just get rid of our mistakes or we can copy and paste things. It's it, nothing is like confined to paper and pen here. It can be kind of therapeutic doing this as well. It takes a lot of time and it does take a lot of thought as you go. Sometimes you find yourself kind of zoning out and then like zone back in and then you've written like half of the logo and you're like, damn, that's looking pretty cool. So as you can see here, it's already really sort of like taking shape. It's looking really scaldy. Like this is before we've even started our texturing or like refining or any of the details. And we haven't even finished the detail layer and it already looks evil as all hell. And I feel like the polymerization word itself kind of adds really nicely to this style of logo. Because let's face it, slam and, and uh, grind bands always have like outrageous names that most people can't even pronounce. You know, like native English speakers can't pronounce most of the names of these bands. As you'll see as I go, you know, I'll be like putting down like maybe half of a letter and then kind of taking a little look and thinking, okay, that's that's a bit too shallow there. It's a bit too thick here. You know what I mean? And I'll kind of nip tuck as I go and I'll use different tools like my lasso or my... Uh, my brush tool just kind of like thicken bits here or like erase parts here you know and you know sometimes when you zoom out real far you'll see like the logo in a different light to when you're like really like right up in in the details here you can see i've like copied and pasted my uh, po again and i'm like changing them into that n at the end and i'm kind of like playing around with a few extra spikes and branches and stuff coming out here and there and once i was happy with the overall shape i basically just merge that all onto one layer play with my refine edge to kind of thicken it up and soften a few bits and then I'll make a, a new layer and fill that selection. So I've got like a nice shiny new softened up and refined layer of my details. Once I'm happy with my refined guide layer or detail layer for lack of a better term, I'm gonna just like hide the layers below it and make a new layer below it and start drawing in drips. And we want our drips and webs to be coming off like parts of the letters that like look like there would be dew or like kind of moisture hanging off. And always remember your drips are going to be like going down if you want this to look relatively, you know, convincing to the eye. Like, so you want it to be going from a nodge to another nodge and kind of hanging down. And other than that, there's really no real rules here. And then on, on my webs, I'm just like throwing some more drips kind of hanging down and uh, making it look like it's, it's really covered in some sort of slime or goo or just something absolutely horrible, you know. I basically put those drips on, an, on a separate layer to our webs, you know what I mean? In case I want to like go back and refine and change things afterwards or add more stuff in. So we've got our like logo uh, layer on the top, we've got our webs below and then our drips below that. Now you can see I'm just putting in some like extra long drips and kind of uh, going in with my brush tool here. And I was kind of thinking, hmm, maybe I'll put like a few like horns and spikes coming out of it. And I was thinking it kind of looked cool, but then I ended up really liking the shape of the logo that we'd, we'd done in the first place. And I thought putting too many horns and branches on it, like it just was way too busy then. And it kind of compromised the overall shape. Now for our detail, I'm basically taking our logo layer, going into layer style and into bevel and emboss. And I'm putting a relatively like hard emboss on it just kind of giving it that kind of like 3D feel, but then I'm rasterizing that, and then I'm putting uh, an inner stroke of about like five to eight uh, pixels on it, an inner black stroke, and I'm rasterizing that as well. So yeah, once I'm kind of happy with like the detailing and the 3D kind of vibe we got going with these like branchy letters now, uh, I'm going in and I'm taking my spearhead blood drips and my spearhead grit textures, and I'm just throwing them over. Uh, both of those textures are in the assets folder in the description, so give me a little like and subscribe 
subscribe if you feel like you can utilize them for your future projects. So yeah, basically I'm just taking my blood drip and I'm kind of duplicating that layer over and over, spinning it around different ways and I'm putting this underneath all of our, our layers. And uh, as you can see, it's very, very busy. So then I'm taking my eraser tool, like a hard eraser, and I'm going in. I've merged all our, our drips onto one layer, and now I'm going in and I'm rubbing out bits that I feel are like way too overboard. This again is all down to your eye on kind of what you feel and what you're kind of hoping to achieve. I just thought that was a bit kind of overkill. So I like rubbed out a lot of, a lot of bits and paired it back a bit. Then basically I'm just like going in and I've like refined my edge again just to take a lot of that spray and kind of like detail off. But leaving like enough for it to look like super organic and filthy. You know, like someone like literally like took a lump of muck and flung it at a wall. Like uh, once I was kind of happy with that and I'd like refined it and kind of rubbed out all the bits I didn't want, I go onto the top layer now. Now. and with our spearhead grit i'm just kind of like throwing that in making it as small as possible because we want it to be like gritty and kind of dirty on the le letters themselves i'm merging them all onto one layer making a selection of our logo selecting inverse and deleting it and then i'm doing the same thing again but with white i'm basically going in and i'm merging all of that onto one layer putting another internal black stroke on it just so all of our edges are nice and hard on this logo and then once i felt like i had enough kind of like damage on the the uh, letters themselves and then enough like filthy splat texture kind of like accentuating the drips and webs that we've got going on so uh, i basically just went in and i just started playing with warp i like reduced the vertical height of the logo then i went in to inflate and i put it on about a like minus five or something just to kind of like pinch it in a little bit on the inside then i was like geez this is looking pretty damn good so i went into our filter gallery and i went to stamp and grain and i've done the same thing that we do in uh, my xerox tutorial put a little uh link to it up there in the top right hand corner of your screen but yeah i just go into the xerox kind of effect and was pretty happy with how that like instantly sandwiched everything together you could probably do this quicker with like a threshold effect this way i just fi find you have more control of the detail especially when you're like you know putting your smoothness all the way down and your light dark balance quite low as well you're going to get a lot more white coming out and that's when you're going to see a lot of our like grit and kind of like splattery textures and all that we put over and the embossing that we put over the uh the letters themselves then once i was happy with that i li it was literally just a case of like going in to um refine edge again and just pinching it in a little bit and then um whacking the contrast up once i had that selection i then inverted the selection deleted the outside parts and you have a nice hard edge on your logo and then you've got like your nice finished brand spanking new filthy disgusting slam logo so there we have it, arguably the filthiest logo known to man, like what's not to love about this style? It's just so out there and it's so against the grain that like you can't help but have a little soft spot for stuff like this. You know, I'm not, as I said, I'm not the biggest slam or grind fan in the world. I'm a bit more of an old school death metal lad myself, but there's a lot of people that vibe off this stuff so hard. So why not put this into your arsenal? So yeah, I hope this tutorial helped you. There's no real strict rule book for making stuff like this. It is very much play it by ear and kind of see what works for you but I really hope this little video has helped uncover a few little tips and tricks along the way and uh, some processes that might benefit you in not just making filthy slam logos. Hopefully this will help you make any sort of metal logo. If uh, this helps, please consider giving me a little like and subscribe. And as always, there's a little assets folder down below. And if there's anything in any of the processes that I've outlined in the video, that you're unsure of and that you think i could have gone into in a little bit more detail please don't hesitate to give me a shout in the comments below and i'll do my best to help you out i swear down and as always i hope everyone is happy and healthy and i will see you in the next one